Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, Chapter 4 of Making a Leather Gun Holster. Thus far, could not be happier with the outcome. Chapters 1, 2, and 3, nothing difficult. 4 is going to be the same way. Now, we're not going to sew in 4, but we're going to set up to sew because our chisel line, that's what's going to make our stitch line very clean and consistent. Now, the point of this video, keeping it simple. That's exactly right. We can hand sew on our kitchen table. Now, I've got a trick. We'll look at that. But for the most part, hand sewing is inexpensive, looks great, and it's pretty quick. No kidding, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, anything I use in this video, leather, tools, liquids, weaverleathercraft.com, or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. So let's step over here, drop in our welt. Now, with our welt, we're going to add glue. We're going to glue this on and drop in our chisel line, but we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to drop in our welt, chisel, and sew just along this edge. That'll give us a chance to wet form this with the gun in the holster, but also we're going to add dye. Once we're done there, we'll pop out our stitch line and then drop in that really pretty white stitch. All right, so basically the outcome of that is the glue is mainly there just to hold it together until we get our final stitch line in. All right, with this, we've got top grain up. So therefore, I need to rough this. I can certainly use sandpaper. In fact, that's 220 grit there. But really all I need to do is rough up our top grain enough to where that glue will sink in, give us a good bond. So I'm going to use a rougher. Now with these, we got to be a little careful here because these will absolutely chew up our finger. And the problem is I'm holding this down and get too close to my finger. I don't want to do that. So with this, I'm going to work sideways. There we go. Just roughing up the top grain so that will accept our glue, give us a good bond. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Roughed up enough. Now, one great trick, barge. I love the barge. It's a great glue. The problem is, as a crafter, it's going to take me forever to use a quart. But a great trick there, this is a cement thinner. When this gets a little thick, just drop a little thinner in there. It'll go right back where it was. That will allow us to use that entire quart right to the end. All right, so with our welt, Let's go ahead and drop glue, and we're going to glue the entire face of this. Now, I can get over to my edge, so I don't worry about getting glue on my table. But with this, it's really not that big of an issue. And the last bit of glue there, okay, that looks good. Now, no worries here. I've got no glue on my table, so safe enough to flip this over. Now, we got to remember, we're going on to the back side of our holster. Back here, again, we've got a top grain. But this is our liner, so I might suggest here, let's just use a little soft sandpaper to rough that top grain up a little bit. Yeah, and there we go. All right, we've got a good, good rough on the back of that. Now let's do this with our glue. Going to drop this again right on my edge, and I'm just going to work my glue off the edge, and I'm going to keep that about a quarter of an inch in, give or take, between a quarter of an inch and three eighths. That should seat our welt very nicely. So right there, right off the edge. Again, we don't want to get glue on the edge of our holster. All right, there we go. All right, let's let that just sit for maybe about five, maybe ten minutes, and then we'll connect the two pieces together. All right, well, that looks good. It looks dry, but it's tacky. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's lay our welt down. There we go. And let's just drop this right to our line or a hair inside. Now, the line does not matter because we're going to trim that off. And there we go. Okay. Let's take a rolling pin and just roll that. There we are. Good bond on that. There we go. All right. Now, let's trim this. New knife always. And again, what we're going to do is use my body as the straight edge. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, you can certainly use a straight edge. But again, new knife always. Let's cut this little piece off. There we go. Look at that again. Looks just like a die cut. Very clean. And trimming off our last corner. There we go. Okay, look at that. Boy, that looks good. Nice. Very clean and straight. All right, let's jump over to the other table. We're going to drop in our chisel line just along our welt. Now, with our holster, we're going to chisel by hand, and we've got to take our time here. But there's an easy way to do this. So let's step over to my shop very quickly, take a peek at that. Now, hands down, sewing machine, 
Best way to go, but we're crafters. That's a big ticket item to get a machine that's gonna sew through half inch thick. Don't worry about it. We're gonna use a chisel. We're gonna mark the other side and chisel. Therefore, we don't have to push that chisel through five ply. But a close second to a sewing machine, in my opinion, more helpful in my shop. Look for our leather element episode on the drill press. Seven things you can do with this. It is a huge help. Now, sheath, again, very thick. So on a flat, on a flat bed, easy to get that hole straight. But right here, it is a particular help because we're sewing a holster. Now with this, we've got this nice big bow here. So therefore, I need to put my drilling surface on a riser above my main base plate. Therefore, I can move my holster along. I've got no worries about rubbing here, but I can get a good straight hole every time. Now the two biggest points, clean, sharp drill bit. We're drilling leather, so it's not really gonna dull fast, but I use a 16th inch drill bit or about a 1.5 millimeter and a metal plate. This is the biggest point because as I drill through the leather, that's going to shear on the backside. So therefore my hole isn't fuzzy. Right there, that's just a cut down piece of a cutting board. When they get too used, I can cut those down, make smaller pieces, but I can C-clamp that down as a guide. Therefore, each hole is spot on. So instead of going with a holster, let's start right here. All right, there we go. We've got a pretty clean stitch line, nice holes on the back, but right here that puckers out a little bit. Well, that's not really an issue because once we sew, we're gonna hammer down our stitch line, close those holes up, look at that, clean and straight, and because of our guide, always a consistent distance from the edge. Now, our stitch line, or our, our holes are gonna be equal distance from the edge, just like the drill press, but we're gonna be using a groove line. It's gonna make things very easy for us. So let's do this. With our welt, we've got about three eighths of an inch, maybe a quarter inch width here. So on our pattern, and we're gonna work on the other side because we're gonna chisel our facial or face side first. All right, so let's do this. Our welt is coming in about three eighths of an inch, maybe a quarter inch. So let's mark that on both ends of our welt line. There we go, easy enough. Now what that's gonna do for me is show me where my start and end holes are. So on this end, let's come in just about an eighth of an inch from our, from our line, make a mark. Same on the other end, about an eighth of an inch in. Okay, easy enough. That shows me where to stop and start for our, our uh, welt line. So let's drop that on our pattern. There we go, make a small mark there and a small mark there. Good, we know where to start, we know where to end. The camera's probably not gonna pick those up. Now, with our chisel, my favorite chisel. It's five stitches per inch. It's a little short of an eighth of an inch tine, eighth of an inch spread. So with this though, we're coming out of a corner. So let's start with our single tine. I'm gonna drop that right in my mark. There we go, straight through. Double check, yep, I've got tine on the back, all right? Now to make this consistent, what I'm going to do is drop my two, my two tine. I'm gonna mark that second hole Drop my first tine in that, there we go. I can fill chisel, all right, there we are. Now we can really move along. We're on a straight section. I'm gonna drop in my six. I can feel tine, let's give that one more shot. There we go. When we jump up to a six, we've got a lot of metal going through that leather. When we jump over to the other side, we're not gonna be able to use a six. Mainly the problem isn't going in, problem's coming back out. All right, so we're gonna go into a corner. Let's pick up our two again. Now, with this, I can simply, in fact, always, I'm gonna drop my first tine in my last hole. That gives me a consistent distance. But we're going around a curve here. So what I wanna do is jump back to my two, drop my first tine last hole, give it a small shot. Okay, now I know where my next chisel mark is. So let's drop that through. Now, we're straightening out, mark. There we go. I'm gonna work my way around my corner in that same fashion. Then we'll be on a straight line where we can jump back to our six time. All right, we're getting into our corner. First time, last hole. We've got enough room there for one more straight. All right, and then one more hole. There's our end point, that worked out nicely. Let's simply jump over to a single time. 
Drop that in right on that mark. There we go. All right, well that looks good. Clean and consistent, just what we're looking for. Now we're gonna jump over to the other side. This is a little more difficult because we certainly could just punch along, but I'm worried here, even if we, over the course of an inch or two, if our tine is spread just a little bit, we're gonna get out of sync with this line of holes. So let's do this. This is a little tedious, but it's going to assure us that we've got accurate holes that are gonna meet up. All right, so I'm gonna lay my pattern, lay my holster right on my pattern. There we go. And I'm gonna take some type of a scribe. I love our heavy duty all, but it's a little too thick there at our point. You'll see what I mean. So with this on our pattern, I'm gonna take this and I'm simply going to punch through my holster and into my pattern. So therefore, again, the camera probably won't see that, but now I've got my markings. What we'll do is transfer that to the other side, mark it and chisel. Our holes will line up perfectly every time. And coming down to our end mark, there we go. All right, good. Now I can see that easily. So what I'm going to do is open my pattern up. I can still see my holes there. What I'd like to do is take a pen and just mark these as I go, but I can see these pretty easily. So now all I'm going to do is line my holster up or my pattern on the other side and let's mark our holes from there. And there we go. Now, yet again, one of those things the camera's probably not gonna pick up. But since we marked from our chisel line, my marking holes are falling right in my groove line. So now, we're going through both our face, a liner, and our welt. I can't use a six on that. Again, the problem is not getting through, it's coming back out. So let's do this, let's stick with a two. That's gonna be a little tedious, but we can get that tool in and out pretty easily. In fact, let's see, like on the other side, let's start right at the top in our groove line. Now, in a perfect world, I could get that straight in each and every time. I can't. So what I wanna do is I'm going to lean just a little bit towards me. So if my, my chisel is right there, straight up and down, I'm going to come in just a hair, just to make sure I don't come out of my welt line there. Now with this, we're marked and I can feel tines there. All right, we're marked, so I don't really have to do first time, last haul. But when I'm taking my chisel out, I don't want to go left and right. Let's go lengthwise. Left and right is going to ream out that hole. There we go, that's not too bad with a two tine. With a four or six, it would be really hard to pull that back out. So let's drop that in, and I'm gonna chisel all the way down to our end point. And there we go, all right, our last hole. Well, it looks pretty good thus far. Good. Now, let's chisel around because we're gonna sew all the way around our holster. With this, though, coming off of a chisel line, I'm gonna drop this extra piece in there so I can get a flat chisel and not have to chisel and bend that down. All right, getting down to our end, I'm gonna measure that. You know what, that is just almost perfect there. So let's drop in first time, last hole. There we go. Well, that meets nicely, all right? So let's do the other end using our bridge there. Mark that, I'm gonna bring it right across just like we did across the top. And there we are, okay, coming down to our last hole. Will that fit in nicely? Very cool, we are set up to make a very clean stitch line. Looks good. All right, follow me to chapter five. We're gonna sew our welt line, work on our edge, and wet form this.